if this is bigger than you. If it was raining, you'd be protected by this thing. <laughs> <laughs> this pond has not been drained, power washed, or cleaned in over 10 years. Okay, you're in for a real treat here. I'm Greg Whitstock, the Pond Guy. This is my channel, Greg Whitstock, the Pond Guy. And we've been hanging out at Brian Helfrich's house today. So Brian, why don't you go ahead and give us a little tour of your backyard, which is pretty awesome. Originally, you know, the pond was designed, um, not knowing I was gonna have three kids, a lot for Abby, with the idea that we'd have more kids, but a safety area. So I'll show you this yep. area first. Yep. It was kind of like the kids' baby pool area. Yeah. Right, where the kids, they could walk down in here, touch the waterfall. I could flood this pit with just like closing off a valve and it instantly turned into a 10 inch deep baby pool. Right. Um, as the kids have gotten older, this got boring. So they're always over on that side, snorkeling and stuff. Right. More importantly than it being the kids' swimming pool area, it's a 6,000 gallon rainwater harvesting system. So cool. So all the water from this gutter comes down through here, goes through our first flush. This pre-filters out the water. There's a big uh, micron net in there yep. that takes all the shingle dust and the sand and everything else, pre-filters the water, goes through a tube, and then comes out into the bottom of this. Right. Since then, this has evolved. The area shrunk down a little bit. The stairs used to be wider. Yeah. That urn wasn't there. That fire pit area wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So like all of our customers, like your imagination just keeps going and going and going, and you always want it bigger or different or better than you did before. So we've added a couple things. This is an elephant ear. Yep. I got in a little four-inch container. Oh, that's this year's plant. This is this year's plant. Wow. The plant for this thing, it was about this big in a little four inch container. I never even took it out of the container. Holy that cow. That four inch container right there. <laughs> and look at the size of this plant. That's amazing because the roots are just getting fed all and it's pulling all the nutrients out of the water. Look at the size of these things. I mean, Grace, this is bigger than you. If it was raining, you'd be protected by this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Always evolving, right? Yeah. A water feature's never done. Even a perfect water feature like this one. Okay. So this is the outdoor kitchen. The village had me put a railing on here, and I think it was last year I felt like the kids were old enough that I didn't need the railing anymore. Yep. For the safety and opened up this line of sight, which I love a lot. My pond is no different than anybody else's pond, 100% designed from inside the house. Yes. My chair at the kitchen table is right here. Right. And that view is right in between the opening of the column and that refrigerator there. Totally cool. So actually, Brian, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this falls right here. It's a different kind of moss that has you got grown on there. So I didn't plant that. So uh -huh. Mother Nature decided one day that this plant should show up, and I believe it's called lungwort. And and it just spreads and spreads. It was never over here. It was actually over on a waterfall over there, but then slowly started showing up here. If you look at it, you know, it almost it's almost like a little cabbage, you know? It's like Yeah. Lungwort, huh? But it really grows wherever it's damp and it Yeah, it's kind of attaching to different stuff. Like none of it's here yet, but I can only imagine over time it's gonna start spreading here. I've got other couples like this hosta. Um, I planted directly in the pond. So uh -huh. It's actually growing right out of the water. We've got some ferns that just kind of showed up. So this impatience, impatience, cothos, sweet potato vine, all those things will grow directly out of water. But this is growing out of a little hole <laughs> right back in there. And you can see, see how it's damp? Yeah. So that water just kind of trickles through here. But this is one of those little plugs to shove down in a hole. Another cool thing that I've been doing with this waterfall is taking water lettuce, which this is really cool. Yeah. As a floating tropical plant. Yeah. In a lot of states, it's ac actually banned because right. it's super aggressive. But up here in Zone 5, Chicago dies in it the winter. Dies off. But you can see here how I just kind of tucked it. I just tucked the piece here and then it starts growing down this waterfall like a vine. This was pieces that grew from over there, but you can see how much it's doing over here. So this is just a piece that's cascaded all the way down. Look at how vine. awesome that is. You started with one lettuce and it just keeps flowing down. So you just kind of anchored the one lettuce, right? Yeah. So I, well, I just put one here. This was the first one. Yep. And there's a big flat rock over here. It's kind of like, it just gets moist. Yeah. water dripping down it. And it just spreads like it normally does. Even look at here. Look at how tiny these little pieces are growing in here. Right. And the, wa the water is just kind of wicking up through that really soft sandstone and growing 
in yep. this area. It looks spectacular. And then he's got a biofalls that starts ahead of the stream, right? Yeah, so a biofalls shoved way back there so you don't see the point of origin. So this has got to be one of your favorite areas, just sitting right here. I have to tell you, it was just, I always designed not to have a bridge or not to have railings. Yep. And as soon as the railings came off, it definitely made it feel more open, not so claustrophobic. Mm -hmm. And now to sit here and effortlessly be able to see the fish without the railing blocking and everything is so much nicer. Yeah. And I left this one because people still like to come and feed the fish. And they lean over. Yeah. So now you can just kind of sprinkle some food in here. Right. And they come. No matter how much. We've been feeding them for like the last 45 <laughs> minutes swimming with them. I just hijacked Greg's camera because I have to show you something, uh, a little cool trick we like to do on a lot of our projects. It's what we call a gravity feed or a secret waterfall. And it's right there. Main water comes from up over here and then it splits and comes down these two falls. But to get this one, I'll show you what I did. So right here, there's a pipe. And so it's a pipe that runs inside my liner. Here's my liner here. And it goes around this rock right here and then discharges out back in there giving me this secret fall i'll show you guys really quick how we adjust the flow of this water so matt remove that rock go ahead and then that thing really gets going now matt put that rock back over the top of it try to plug it up pretty pretty simple there you go without using a ball valve or anything we can adjust the flow just by adjusting that rock so just talk a little bit about the filtration. There's two parts to the filtration of this. You know, it doesn't have a skimmer box. It has what we call a negative edge or a pond that goes into a pondless. Mm -hmm. My pondless just happens to be a 6,000 gallon rainwater harvesting system. All the water goes over there, the pumps sit down there. That water then from the rainwater harvesting system is pushed up to a biofalls and then more importantly, this wetland filter over here. So instead of having six biofalls on my pond, I have one bigger bog filter over here. The bog filter, the way it's designed is water moves up through a bunch of rock and gravel. As that water moves up through there, there's tons of bacteria seeded in there. You know, a biological filter, whatever size box it is, the whole idea of that box is to provide a surface area for bacteria to grow. The more surface area, the more bacteria. A wetland filter has an enormous amount of surface area with all that rock and gravel. So millions and billions and billions and trillions of bacteria are growing in that area. So the water gets pumped up through there yep. and then just circulates back. So you've got a biofalls, the wetland filter, and then you also have a, how much gallons are under the ground in the... Uh, so it's uh, almost equal. So you have a 6,000 gallon rainwater harvesting tank and my pond is about about 6,000 gallons, mm -hmm. so it's almost equal. Right now, I have these air bubbles that come up, and the main reason I actually do the air bubbles, it's not to help with more oxygen or anything else, it's actually to distort the water just enough so the heron can't see through it. Yep. And if you can see that now, how it's kind of wavy. Yep, little bubble screen. So we actually sell the aeration stones as the bubble screens, and there it is, so it's shut off. Do you see that huge, enormous rock? Yep. That whole thing is a giant fish cave. Right. So I could actually get underneath that thing and hide if I wanted to. And so when I put the air stone underneath that rock, what happens is all the air builds up at the bottom of the rock and then finds areas to finally like escape out. So instead of it being constant, it kind of goes whoop and you get bigger bubbles that way. Yep. Much different effect underneath the stone than that one over there. I'll turn it back on so you can really see the difference again. Boom, just like that. And then there's a little story here with all of these basalts. So Brian, you said, can I have some basalts for my pond? And I'm oh, like, you, sure. You remember this? I think it was 51. <laughs> there's like 51 basalt columns. Unbelievable. So when I, thought, when I first all saw those. the basalt, my mind went instantly to Superman crystals. All these things going all over the place and how cool it would be to build a waterfall. And so we started doing the waterfall over here. And as much as I wanted to do different layers of them, yep. we ran out of space. So we took the remaining ones and did this whole wall over here if i were to do this over again yeah i would use our new stack slate walls yes i would love to rock that whole thing in with our stack slate walls and then the plants would just easily come over the top of it and then this is a classic example though what is that that's a ketone ester yeah 
has the Katoni Aster. All right, so you got a Katoni Aster here, and then the fish can actually swim underneath it, and it also softens up the edges. Once again, you don't want to know where the water ends and the land begins. So you have the basalt columns there, you got a Katoni Aster hanging over, and it just naturalizes everything. Yeah, to me, the, the plants are way more important than the placement of the rock. In fact, this edge, I wasn't happy with the placement of all the stones. So you can use a plant to hide all that stuff. Look at how natural that looks. So the kids can just hang out, swim in the water, Feed the fish. <laughs> Does Teddy like it? Yeah, no. no. I know. <laughs> this pond has not been drained, power washed, or cleaned in over 10 years. Because it's a big ecosystem. It's a big ecosystem. The kids, I've been adding the bacteria once a week, just like we tell everybody else. I had that professional grade bacteria, and occasionally I put in the professional grade SAB. The bacteria is eating all of the sediments and the things that haven't been swept over the side of that waterfall. It just stays spotless. You got a beautiful hardscape. I mean, what size is your yard? It's not very deep. It's a hundred wide at the very, very widest point. It's more of this trapezoid shape. Uh -huh. But it's only about 60 feet from here to that back corner and 30 feet from that corner to that corner. And so what's amazing, I think with any pond we build or any pond we design, a properly designed pond will make your yard feel epically larger. Ah, uh, yes. What I really like about my backyard is when you come in from this side yard over here, the sound pulls you. Yes. Right? I like the plants and everything else. But all you see is this one waterfall and people are blown away by this. But then if you look just past that waterfall, what are those water lilies? And is that other water splashing? And so it keeps pulling you farther and farther and farther. And as you move around the yard, you keep discovering more and more. And I love sitting in multiple areas. So having the one viewing area over there is really, really nice. Especially if it's raining, you can sit outside. But to sit down here, have an awesome fire, sit out here, the kids do s'mores, and, and I sit back and make sure they don't burn themselves. <laughs> it truly is a spectacular property. And then just show, just for that, the, the little walkway that you've created out here, because well, it, it's changed over the years. You had said, hey, Brian, trust me, and you started creating a pathway back there, which I yep. never thought of. Mm -hmm. So I just took the pathway and said, let's do a little bit more with it. I love so many different areas yeah. of the yard. Yeah, total different feel back a here. Totally different feel. Now it feels like you're kind of in this enchanted forest. And at night, like there's little lights that kind of twinkle around in here. Yeah. As big as that waterfall looks over there, mm -hmm. you don't need a huge amount of space, but you need a lot of rock. So look at all of this rock that has to retain the soil to create a waterfall that big. Yep. And then look at the size of the plants. Yeah. You want to plant big stuff behind your waterfall so your eyes stop at the waterfall. Once again, you don't want a straight path. You just kind of swing through here and it's just a mystery that draws you through it. And then here's the back of the biofalls right here. I mean, this is the filter, the wetland yeah. filter. Well, that's how Brian Helfrich lives the aquascape lifestyle. And what's so fun is it's just such a fun place to hang with the kids. And hopefully this inspires you guys too. It's never done. So here's Brian's pond. You look at this thing and look, it's perfect, but yet we're always thinking of new ideas, new ways. We live the aquascape lifestyle. Aquascape is the only manufacturer of pond equipment that builds water features every single day. I love my own.